These lessons are recorded using 4K UHD video assets with aspect ratio 21 to 9 and 3840 by 1600 resolution, to mimic studio-wide films, and utilize ultra-wide monitors for editing which is most efficient, or use two monitors minimum. You can use your own media with any resolution when following these lessons. We'll do our best to zoom when needed, best if viewed on a 4K monitor while learning these techniques. Reviewing and Marking Clips We're going to talk about marking clips. Subclipping is a powerful tool on big productions. Assistant editors often use this to trim down all the extraneous material before the director calls action, and all the material after the director calls cut. The editor can then view the footage without the distraction of the noise that happens on set. Also shots are taken from multiple cameras and many in one clips sometimes if they get synced and cut but other editors. So by subclipping, you can organize everything before laying down the timeline. Either on the cut page which is new in DaVinci Resolve. Or on the standard method of editing and timeline using the edit page. We will have lessons on the cut page and why it makes so much sense to use in a large production even more. For smaller project. Maybe you're just letting the camera roll. Well you can set up duration markers. Convert them to in and outs, and you can just focus on just those sections of longer takes that you want to use. From previous lessons 1 to 4, we've organized everything into bins. Let's go into this B-roll bin as I hover over these clips, they pull up here into the viewer. You can turn off your audio if annoying. A single clip gets clips in the viewer. In order to scrub I'll grab the little scrub tool underneath the viewer. I can hit the play button to play forward, stop playback, go to end or to the beginning of the shot. Or set loop, so that when I get to the end of this clip it just keeps playing through. Or use common editing keyboard shortcuts. L is play forward, J is play backward, and K is pause. If I double tap on L, it will play double time. Double tap on J, double times backwards. Let's pull up a longer clip. I'm going to sort by duration to look for a long clip. Hit J to start playing. And then I to set an endpoint. MO to set an out point. The concept here is we're marking ins and outs for our sub clips. As I scroll through here, for the airplane landing, CA to marker point press M. You can see that there's an overlay at the top of the window. If I press M a second time while I'm sitting on a marker. A marker dialog comes up and I can call this landings shot. I can add notes. I can give this keywords which is great for smart bins. And get used to doing that or see lesson 4 and 6 on how and why it's important. Add color also. To span the marker, hold Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac and drag that marker and create a duration marker. The secret for subclips. This marker now has a duration. If I right click up here, I can set an in and out point from the duration marker. My in and out points are set for later editing. Let's do it again here for takeoffs.
Finally, if I jump into the edit page, I've got this duration marker. Let's create a new bin call it subclips. If I right click up here, I can set an in and out point from the duration marker. Right click and choose create subclip or alt B. So there's one subclip. Let's say I don't like the name Lennings shot. Right click on the marker. Choose modify marker. And then I can go ahead and make changes or remove altogether. Shift up and down between marker endpoints. Now on duration markers. You're only going to go to the end point of the marker but it will jump from marker to marker using shift up and down. See more advanced lessons for trim and cuttings coming soon.